Justice has just uh, had a private meeting with the U.N. Uh, Secretary General. And, Mike, at any moment, the Pope is going to be addressing the United Nations staff. We expect uh, the, the speech to be short, uh, maybe five minutes. He's going to be speaking in English as he continues his tour through the United Nations toward the, the speech to the General Assembly at about 10.20 this morning. Yeah, and we will cover both speeches live, Joe, when the Pope does speak to the UN staff. We will cover that live. But, you know, Robert Draper in Washington, Father O'Brien is still here. Maria, off of what you just said about another theme of service the Pope has raised, one of, one of the truly differences, at least in my mind, is in the, Pope, Pope John Paul was a warrior, a Cold War warrior against communism. He was so instrumental in changing the shape of the world. I view this Pope as a warrior against exclusion, one of his themes. Right. Don't exclude the immigrant. Don't exclude the gay. Yeah, no, he's definitely inclusive. He said that a few times on, on this trip. I, the image, is, which I think is very helpful, is not just a church, he says, we should not just be a church with open doors, but a church that goes outside into the streets, where you meet people in the gritty reality of their lives. And that's where he wants us. He also said the church is like a field hospital, and we must tend to people's wounds. That, to me, is a call to be uncomfortable, to be challenged, to go out and encounter people different than myself. And, and Robert Drake, in, uh, in your works and your studies of, of, of this pope, w one of the elements of combat involved within the Vatican, obviously, is his trying to change the bureaucracy, especially the financial aspect of the Vatican. What is your view on how that is going and how this pope is handling it? Well, he's, he's essentially assigned uh, George Pell, Cardinal George Pell from Australia, a former rugby player and a pretty tough guy uh, to oversee these financial reforms. Uh, uh, he's he's tasked him out with doing that, and, and I think it's sort of slowly but surely. You can see some pushback from within that there have been some leaks uh, coming out of the Vatican uh, trying to suggest that uh, Cardinal Pell has lived a lavish life himself. So there, there are clearly some elements uh, on the inside that are resisting these reforms. I also want to go back, though, to uh, this notion of um, uh, Francis's call to service. And uh, this actually is a through line uh, throughout his career. It's also how Pope Francis became Pope Francis. He was elected uh, in the conclave, in large part due to a speech that he had given to other cardinals a week or so before, in which he said that the church for too long had been too insular, and that it needed to essentially blow out its doors, to go out into the streets, to go out into the periphery and have what is called il incontro, the encounter. And the encounter does not mean simply lecturing people on rights and wrongs, but in fact having a dialogue, listening. And that was, mo that was uh, so moving to a lot of cardinals who believed that the Catholic Church had suffered so many bad and needed to change its ways, needed somebody from the outside. So, uh, so that message that we've been hearing the last few days, the directives that he's given to bishops uh, to, uh, and, and for that matter, to parish priests to take into their parish at least one refugee family, is very much in keeping with uh, the Jorge Mario Bergoglio, who was Arch 